It is really good to see all of you here today. I know so many of your faces, so it's a pleasure and, and an honor to be a part of this program. This uh, dropout crisis, and indeed it is a crisis, is important on so many levels. We're talking about a crisis on that personal level for each of our, our students, our, our boys and our girls, but it's also a crisis on the family, the national, and indeed the international level. But it's a basic question, how do we keep our boys and girls in school? How do we show them, in real life terms, the, the, the importance of getting the necessary information to take them where they want to go, where they want to be in life? But if you look at today's situation, we don't have to look far. Look at the un unemployment rate. And this one very telling fact. Now, overall, we know the unemployment rate is high. It hovers around 9% today. But if you look at those folk who don't have a high school diploma, the unemployment rate is probably double for them. And that's all we need to say, is that education can take you in life where you want to go, but you have to, t have to take advantage of that. This initiative, ETV American Graduate, is funded, of course, by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And what we're doing, we're utilizing many of the amazing media formats available for us today to put the issue of the dropout rate out front so that more of us are aware and can better understand what's contributing to this crisis. Now, during our time to, together today, we'll highlight solutions and successes as well as encouraged collaboration and continued communication. Let me take this opportunity to uh, welcome those joining us online. And our online participants are watching the ETV American Graduate Summit from one of three channels, the ETV American Graduate Facebook page, the ETV American Graduate channel on Ustream, or the ETV American Graduate website at scetv.org slash American Graduate. If those of you joining us online uh, would like to share in the discussion by posting comments or questions online, you can do so on Facebook and Ustream using the embedded chat features. And if you're watching from the ETV American Graduate website, then we encourage you to email us uh, your questions at etvamgrad, that's one word, etvamgrad at scetv.org. You can also take part in the discussion on Twitter by using the hashtag pound etvamgrad. Again, one word, pound etvamgrad. It is my distinct honor to introduce our keynote speaker this afternoon. Dr. Sam Drew is the Executive Director of the National Dropout Prevention Center. Dr. Drew's career in education spans 39 years and includes the positions of teacher, school principal, special assistant in the United States Department of Education, Deputy Director of Education in the South Carolina Governor's Office, Superintendent of a State Residential Alternative School, and Superintendent of a County School System in South Carolina. Dr. Drew served as State Director of Adult and Community Education in South Carolina for eight years before joining the Adult Literacy Media Alliance in New York as Director of State Partnership Development. And in July of 2002, he joined the National Dropout Prevention Center at Clemson University as Associate Director for Research and Evaluation. Currently, he serves as the Interim Executive Director of NDPC. Welcome, Dr. Drew. Thank you very much, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm very pleased to be with all of you today, and I um, appreciate and, and give thanks to all who have made this summit possible. We really need to shed as much light as possible on this huge challenge of dropouts in our state and across this nation. We are making real progress. Um, here in South Carolina through the efforts of the South Carolina Department of Education and the at-risk student committee and the EEDA coordinating council and all of the programs represented here today and, and multiples of you. Um, and we should really celebrate that progress. 
but we also need to renew our resolve to push forward because we have a lot to do. The panel that you'll hear from today and the fe featured programs are rich with experience and, and strategies that are working, and they'll give you the well-rounded picture, really, of the dropout issue and solutions happening in the state. With the limited time that I had this morning, I, I thought I would take the word keynote seriously and deliver one keynote, um, one that I think is um, important uh, as we address this issue, important to build on our progress. And it is that I think we need a broader vision um, and that we have to simply see things differently if we're going to move ahead. Let me illustrate that for you, if I can operate the machinery here. Well, let's bypass the machinery. What I uh, was going to show you, there. Good, good, good. What is this? It's an apple. What is this? Are they the same? No. No. One is a picture of an apple. The other is an actual apple. You can touch this, you can feel it, you can get a sense for it. One gives us information that can only be used if we know the real thing. And it's so true with the dropout issue that so often we see the entire dimension of dropout on charts or graphs or as numbers or percentages as data. Don't make a mistake about what I'm trying to tell you here. That's one way to look at dropouts, and it's an important way and one that we advocate. But we need to know that data is only tool, and to bring about the real and lasting change with young people who are, not, are at risk of not succeeding, we have to really see each student differently, as Dr. Zace has just said to you. And to see students differently, we have to see the context for these students differently. We need to personalize this issue. We're all affected and shaped by everything around us. And risk factors for our young people come in many forms. Some we can do something about, some we have much less control over. We tend to group these risk factors into four categories, the home, the community, the school, and the student. Too often, I think, we blame the student. Think of these as lenses, and we're looking through these lenses to be able to see these students differently. We have to see home and parents in a different way. We all recognize the importance of home, good parenting, early parenting, involving parents in the early education of their children, and the importance of continuing parent parental involvement in schools. But we also have to see that not all homes are the same. Some can offer children tremendous resources, and others are stuck in a cycle of poverty, and poverty is a problem that we must address if we're going to make significant progress in graduating all of our children. We simply cannot ignore this. Mm -hmm. Assuring quality education is one sure way to make an impact on poverty. When we see children on paper and note the disparities in the achievement between black children and white children and Asian children and Hispanic children and Native American children, do we see some kids who can't learn as well as others? Is that the problem? I don't think so, and I don't think any of you think so. When we hear the story of Ron McNair from my hometown of Lake City, um, and, and who beat the odds to, be, to become a real star, to become an astronaut, we hear that story with a sense of pride. But the fact is, that a person can come from an impoverished background and succeed does not mean that everyone can. The facts just don't support this conclusion. Take a look at the high correlations between socioeconomic status and incarcerations, putting people in prison. Take a look at the high percentage of prisoners who cannot read. Ron McNair and others like him beating the odds means that it can be done, and poverty does not mean we're not smart. That's the good news. But to make sure that all our children succeed, we have to see equity in a different way. Equity does not mean the same. When we begin to see 
that equity means what's needed to put every child on the same playing field, then we'll make significant progress. And yes, we're going to have to work a lot harder. We're going to have to work a lot smarter to achieve this, but we're also going to need sufficient resources. We're paying a huge price now to put people in prisons as opposed to educating them. Our economy is taking a huge hit with undereducated and underemployed people. How about community? Same goes for community. School and community both play a crucial role in helping our nation's young people develop into tomorrow's leaders and our nation's future. And we need to see our communities as educa educative communities, as avenues for learning and making learning relevant for our young people. And communities need to begin to see themselves as allies with our schools and young people as resources. There are recent policy decisions that have been made with No Child Left Behind that make it more flexible and make us able to develop once again community schools, and I think that's a very positive step forward. Making our schools the hub of community life, especially in our urban and rural areas, I think is a grand vision that will take us a step forward. And folks, we have to begin to see our schools differently. Across this country, our kids do not have the same opportunities in all schools. You don't need to look far across our own state um, to know that and to recognize that, that the resources some schools have and the severe lack of resources in other schools. And all of our schools also need to be put on the same playing field if we're going to continue to increase our progress. Even in our best schools, and I'm in those schools quite a bit in interviews and in focus groups with young people. I hear examples about how schools are still driving kids away with curriculum that is not relevant and engaging, with schools that are not inviting places for students to come to. We're putting a lot of programs in place, and we're actually doing that a lot better than we've ever done. We're putting programs in place that have a research base behind them that we're confident will work, and we're using our money wisely. But we need to make those programs a part of everyday school. We also have to har take a hard look at policies and practices in schools that exist in schools now, many of which drive young people out of school. There's so many things that we do that are formed around old paradigms and systems of schooling that are much less relevant for today's young people. We all say that we want students to succeed and excel. That's our vision, right? Why are we still then implementing some policies and practices that are sure that that will not happen? What sense does it make to expel students out of school with no educational programs in place for those students? Why do we have our schools configured to retain students when we know the effects of retention? Why are students not reading by third grade? Why are students entering high school unable to read or, com or compute math at that level? Why are we focusing most of our dropout prevention resources on high school where the problem is remedial and not preventative? We say that high schools are the dropout factories, and believe me, I hate that term, but it has its effect. I say it starts much earlier than that. And along with the 15 strategies for keeping students in school that we've developed at the National Dropout Prevention Center, I think it's probably time for us to make a list of the 15 dumbest policies and practices <laughs> that assure that they drop out. And finally, and most importantly, we have to see the student in a different way. We need more authentic relationships with students in our schools, particularly those most at risk. The difference between that picture of an apple and a real apple. Relationships that embrace and show trust and let them know that every one of them are valued as individuals. Why would we expect children to excel in an environment that does not respect them or think that they matter? How hard would you work? How hard would you work for an organization that didn't feel that you mattered or an organization that didn't value as, you as a person or as an individual? This is not an easy task with some students. Those of us who have worked in education for a period of time know that. But you know, every one of these children started life with the same innate resiliency and the eagerness to learn. And many of them, bit by bit over the years, lost that resilience when home, community, and schools didn't support them. 
A data sheet is not a student, just as a picture of an apple is not an apple. We need to see and understand in a very personal way why students drop out. Uh, I won't go into details, I won't ask for a show of hands, but if any of you in the audience are divorced, um, if you've started to learn to play a musical instrument and stopped, or a foreign language and stopped, you're a dropout. One of our NDPC board members recently said something that really stuck with me. He said, we need to talk about it, we tend to talk about a dropout with an air of arrogance and attach a stigma to it when every one of us have experienced, have experienced as a dropout at some level. <clears throat> and the point is that if we think about the reasons we dropped out of something, we can see firsthand and very personally the reasons young people drop out of school. We feel alienated. We don't have the support we need to continue with something. We don't feel appreciated or what we're doing doesn't matter. We're having difficulty with the subject matter or academics. A relationship with another person and with these students gives us the richest source of data that we could have. And so we need to make students feel mattered and respected and wanted. Peter Benson, who re recently uh, passed away of the Search Institute, described this as finding the spark in every child, the spark in each of them that makes them happy, that motivates them, that gives their life meaning, and that gives uh, learning relevance. But until we can come together and see the home, school, and community uh, in this light, uh, no other solutions that we put into place will be completely effective. So I hope in this brief time I've made this one keynote clear that we need to use our vision to see things differently, we, the way we see policy, the way we see equity, the way we see school climate, the way we see the influence of home, community, and school on the child, and we need to make the difficult changes and, and tackle the difficult work that will actually move us toward, toward assuring that every child um, succeeds. The programs that you will hear from today are doing this. Our task is to make these programs the rules rather than the exceptions. Let me show you one more picture and ask you what this is. Lump of coal. My real question is, can you see it this way? One of our Crystal Star winners, National Dropout Prevention Center Crystal Star winners said it this way. She said, in my high school, we have an 85% graduation rate and almost every other high school in the country would envy that record. But I don't see it that way. I see 150 young people that we have failed and I won't rest until the number of graduates is 100%. So see the data, let it guide us, but see the child and all the factors that affect the child and we'll make the hard choices and address the hard issues to reach our mark. And that's our biggest challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Drew, and that, that authentic relationship with our children, that is so critical, so critical.